desperately need an internet bill of rights is because these tech monopolies could just do whatever they want, right? right? So, so they could just say, hey, it, it was like uh, on Tucker Carlson the other night. There, yeah. there was like doctors doing doing uh, videos Dr. showing our data about the invisible enemy, quote unquote. Yep. And uh, they were censored off YouTube, right? So medical professionals right. citing our data just get completely silenced, right? So, so how how is that? How is that American? How is that legal? How is that okay? And uh, it's one of those things we just, as the American people, got to realize. We need to respect our uh, law enforcement, and we need to respect our courts, and we need to respect you know whoever else to the degree that they adhere to our founding principles. Right? Mm -hmm. If they are going off acting like communist China or, or communist Russia, then they are no longer worthy of that respect. Right? If, if it's one of those things like I'm a hunt, I you know I default generally to support law enforcement. Right? They have a very difficult job. Uh, but the fact is, if they prove themselves over and over and over and over again that they are totally hostile to due process, they're totally hostile to constitutional rights, then, then at some point we got to say, like, look, this is never going to change as long as we keep legitimizing, we keep pretending the system is legitimate. Right. Right. Well, and what, yeah. what Kimberly was saying about this being a catalyst, there's two sides to it. What I can see is, is that... And I, and I got this really clearly, and several of us have around me recently, as, as this becomes more and more intensified, and people, everyday people, everyone is starting to see the censorship, like when the doctors, I mean, I, I have friends that have been asking me, just my normal old friends that aren't really truthers or anything else, saying, what the heck? I saw you put up that doctor video, and they took it down. That kind of stuff is waking everybody up. We are literally getting... It's like I want to say thank you to these people who are being so obvious because it is it is acting like that that um, pebble in the shoe that is getting so irritating that people cannot ignore it anymore. And I do think that that's the only thing that's going to bring us all together is when enough is enough, it will be enough, and the people are going to go. This is not happening anymore. And we need everybody on board. So it's serving its purpose and I to think some we're, degree. We're, yeah, and I, th I think we're starting to get there, um, behind mm -hmm. the scenes especially, right? There's a lot of people that are totally agree with us on that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they've just been kind of too afraid to speak out. And it's about kind of getting those people to say, like, look, even if you have barely any followers, just getting yourself on the record is like, hey, I'm someone, I see this problem, this is totally unacceptable. Yep. And even if you have, you know, 30 followers, like, just voicing your opinion out there, people don't realize the degree to which that helps. Um, they don't realize the degree to which, um, like when you, if everyone who calls the White House, if you want to make a comment, they'll give you a thing to record like a voicemail. Mm -hmm. And that voicemail will get transcribed. And so a lot of people think, oh, but what's my voice going to do? And they don't realize all those transcriptions are added up, right? So, so their priorities in the White House or the priorities in Congress go like, hey, we have, you know, this many people yelling at us about this problem day. We have this many people yelling at us about this problem day. Let's, like, prioritize accordingly. So they don't realize the power of every individual voice, like how powerful that is to be voicing that on social media, to be calling the White House, to be calling your Congress people and saying, look, enough is enough. And I think mm -hmm. a, good, a good place to start for this. Um, I was at a Republican event, I would say, like, uh, last spring, maybe. Don't quote me on that, but just roughly. And I had the chance to talk uh, to Matt Gates, the congressperson from Florida, extensively mm -hmm. about this is the Internet Bill of Rights, this is why we need it, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, totally. We should totally do that. Um, so he, he gave me his personal email and said, like, let's, let's stay in touch about this. Uh, but I think if we could be calling on people like Matt Gates, calling on people like Josh Hawley, uh, calling on people like Jim Jordan and the, the Freedom Caucus and saying, look, we are losing our freedom every single day. We need an Internet Bill of Rights right now. And and you guys need to go, go make this happen right now. Yeah. I think that would be extremely effective. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think from the other direction, I think if we were to, to go after the Progressive Caucus, so if we were to say, Ro Khanna, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, people like that, we need an Internet Bill of Rights, right? Because Tulsi Gabbard gets screwed by Google, right? Any, anybody with right. a dissenting opinion to the yeah. orthodoxy 
get censored and screwed. So, so we need to be creating this triangulation effort to be like, look, enough is enough. We demand that our written constitutional rights be respected. We demand that they apply to the internet as, as equally as they apply to everywhere else. Right. Uh, until we do that, we are going to be hamstrung in any sort of activist effort that we try to pull off. You're absolutely right. You right. see Facebook. Right. That, so there's That's groups the problem. Protests, yeah. But there's groups organizing protests against these shutdowns, right? Of, right. Like, closing our economy. And they're taking them you're down. only allowing the biggest stores to stay open, and mm-hmm. you're screwing everybody else. You're not doing anything to help us. You're giving billions of dollars to the banks and nothing to the regular people who lost their jobs or their livelihoods at, through no fault of their own. Right. And and enough is enough, right? Like so, right. so these protests are being organized, like a bunch of the Michigan Capitol. I think there's one here in Arizona on Facebook. And so Facebook is now taking it upon themselves. If you're protesting this uh, hidden the uh, aggressive hidden enemy. or overreaching steps that the government is taking to protect us from the invisible enemy, if you're protesting that. Facebook is going to take your ability to organize that protest away, arbitrarily. Right, yeah. so that's arbitrarily. Those places we need to realize that nothing else is going to happen until we get this Internet Bill of Rights, right? Because until they do, they could just shut off the flow of information, and, and we will have a very limited reach of who we can actually get to. Right. Um, right. So, so this is a great place of where we can get the progressives, and we can get the QAnon people, we can get the Freedom Caucus people, and we can come together and be like, look, enough is enough. We demand our rights back. We demand that our free speech applies to the internet. And and until we do, until we as the people light a fire under their asses and make them do that, we're all good. nothing is going to happen with with any of our priorities. Right? Any of the changes that any of us want to make in any direction. Right? Whether you're a super far lefty, whether you're a super far righty, nothing is going to happen until we get an internet bill of rights. Right. That's why-